guys, it's Christine Bertram, and I'm coming to you live from the hive on a Thursday night. <laughs> oh man, I feel like I was just live with you guys yesterday with Tip Tuesday. <laughs> so, wow. <laughs> I literally ran upstairs to go get all the card kits because I pulled the same thing that I did on game night back in December. I left the card kits up in my design room. So, Oh, I gotta catch my breath. <laughs> Here I was all set to go live like a minute early and it dawned on me. I'm like, oh, I gotta get the card kits. So here we are, but let's find the live. Oh, take a deep breath. So did you guys like Kelly's Technique Thursday card today? I think she did a fabulous job representing the bees. Let's see here. Oh, and then of course my internet's probably set on the house because I was just in there having dinner. Oh, no, it's not. Perfect. Okay. So let's see who's all with us. It's connecting to Facebook. Let's see what's going on here. All right. January card making class. All right. You guys can't see me. I wonder if I'm in the right spot. <laughs> there I am. A buffalo plaid. Woohoo. Okay. There's Sandy and Faye. And Cindy, thanks for sharing, Cindy. Okay, <laughs> so I was trying to find the my shirt, you guys. <laughs> Hi, Randy. I was going back and looking at the winter card class uh, to draw the two winners for those two cards, and I realized that when I started that video, I had pulled in the wrong video. All right. So, okay. Do you guys like Kelly's technique All right, so. There's Randy. Okay, so Kelly's Technique Thursday. Hi, Sherry Martin. Okay, I think I'm set. Turn that volume down here. Okay. Oh, it's freezing. <laughs> Are you guys freezing? I don't know if it's my phone or what is going on. Let's get into the hive here. And we'll choose a different one and go from there. All right, I'm connected again. I have to be with, with you guys, <laughs> otherwise I, I don't know what's going on. Hi, Barb Johnson. Hi, Donna. All right. It's going. 27 of you guys are with me. Woohoo. Okay. So tonight we have the January card making class, but hi, Kathy King. But I do have a, a, a list of some things that I want to go over with you guys. And one of them was Kelly's Technique Thursday. So I am going to flip the camera down. And I'm going to show you her card. It's so pretty, you guys. No freezing on Cindy's end. Awesome. Hi, Dot from Anancock, Virginia. <laughs> Hi, Linda Hodge. Um, so frustrating. No notification tonight. I didn't get a notification either, Linda. I didn't. I was looking and searching for it, so I have no idea. Um, I was a minute tardy. <laughs> so, you guys, if you want to see how Kelly made this awesome B card, um, make sure you catch her live. Hi, Gwen Pet Petrashek. Patrashek, <laughs> you taught me how to say it so I enunciate correctly. Hi, Mo, um, from the freezing down state of Wisconsin. Yes, 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 Jeannie Tur Jean Turwilliger's here. Yeah, hi, Amy. Hi, Cheryl Thomas. Hi, Melanie Boy, 75 degrees in Yuma. I love it. You guys, I think Kelly made a deal that um, the first person to sign up on my direct team is going to be getting this card. <laughs> no incentives though, you don't have to, right? But I do send welcome cards. Hi Randy, hi Deb. Um, I do send welcome cards to all of my new team members. So there's no incentivizing there. You will get a card for me if you sign up on my team, but this is the card that will go out to the next person who does sign up. So it's so exciting. Um, I It's really crazy, you guys. Celebration is usually like the number one time a year that uh, uh, people generally sign up to be discount shoppers or to do whatever they want with the Stampin' Up! Uh, gig. And I think what happened was in November, there was a really good promotion and we had like 11 people sign up. Hi, Jennifer Jones. We had 11 people sign up on the team in November. I think people that would, would, would have normally waited until January, but they took advantage of the deal in November. So, so Kelly made an awesome B card. I was so excited uh, when she showed me a picture of it and I just love it. Those leaves behind there, if I, I didn't watch that video and all, I caught half of it so far. Um, I believe those leaves are from the artfully layered um, dyes, if I'm not mistaken, but oh my gosh, the bees are awesome. So um, yeah, and it's so cool. And on top of it, um, Kelly's mom is going to be making me more of these so that I have them to send out. So very, very cool. So that was Technique Thursday, in case you guys did miss it. Very cool. You can watch the replay. Hi, Arliss. 
Hi, Barb from North Dakota. Hi, Stacy Burns. So, Arliss, did you find the Winter Creative Escape video um, from Monday night that I did? I know that you were anxious to get that video to watch and see the cards in action. <laughs> so, I'm hopeful that you found it. And let's see here, you guys. Oh, my goodness. So, the, when I talked to you guys yesterday for the Tip Tuesday, I talked about the Summer Creative Escape um, well, the Winter Creative Escape was this past weekend, but I talked about how the Summer Creative Escape is coming um, up in July. You guys, I have like 75 people signed up already. Isn't that crazy? Uh, it looks like I'm going to be adding another in-person day. So what it is, it's a one-day event, but I hold it. It's This time it was four days in a row. Plus, there's an online aspect to it. So if you can't make it in person, you can definitely do the online version. And with five days, I think there's going to be... 10 creative presentations. Yeah, so very, very full. <laughs> Hi, Christine from Melbourne, Australia. Woohoo! <laughs> I've been there <laughs> over half my life ago. I was there. Hi, Denise. Okay, Arliss, I'm so glad you got it. And your box came today. I literally took that to the post office at my lunch hour yesterday, and you got it in one day. That's awesome. Hi, Kathy Jackson from Iola and Mary Drummond. I know. Isn't that awesome, Cindy? like 76 and of those like 60 of them are already in person and I have about 12 I just it was it was at least 70 have signed up so it's crazy it's a good crazy and I already talked to my mom you guys she's gonna do the same menu she did for the last summer escape with burgers and homemade lasagna for dinner so woohoo hi Lisa hi Kathy Groves Kathy Groves I saw your order come through today um so um, we are going to do a, a drawing. If I, if I remember for the celebration board, I'm going to do a drawing. Um, I have this board full and I have names waiting to go on the next board. So Kathy, you're going to get on the next board. Mo, you're going to get two. There's two spots left on there that Mo, you're going to get for two of them. And then we'll start the next board and put your leftover <laughs> names on the next board. So we got to remember to do that. I know after one of my other classes, I forgot to do it. So help me. I should write it down. So we're going to do that. Um, so what happens during celebration is, hi, Vicki Tillett. If you are a customer of mine and you place over $150 in orders from me directly, uh, not from yourself, <laughs> even if you're on my team, but you have to order through me, uh, you are invited to my celebration celebration, um, which is going to be the first week of March. Um, hi, Dirt, hi, D. Hi, Donna from Florida. Uh, if you are um, are on my team currently and you help two new people join your team, you're invited to my celebration celebration. And another way to be invited to my team is if you join my team and you um, are looking for guidance and help and um, want to participate in my celebration celebration, that's another way that I invite my new team members to join in my celebration celebration. Uh, so that is in early March. And I wanted to show you guys a project that we're going to be making for this celebration celebration, uh, just to show you guys what's going on. It is the 3D project we did for the Winter Creative Escape, and you'll be getting the supplies to make your own. It's a little mini paper pumpkin box, and I will not decorate your box for you, but you will get the supplies, um, different, and you're going to be using different paper. <laughs> oh, geez, waiting on her order. Awesome. Uh, you will get the, hi, Elaine Rebeck. You're going to get the box and you're going to get designer paper, but it's going to be celebration designer paper. It's not going to be the abstract. For the Winter Creative Escape, we did um, part of the 3D project was they got the abstract ephemera pack and they got some embellishments. And so for the celebration celebration, you'll get the paper pumpkin box. Um, you'll get some pieces to put in and um, some designer paper, but I'm going to show you it so you can see what it's all about, you guys. So I have to thank Tammy Sikolik and Anna Rebadu for ha helping me decorate my box. <laughs> so if you attended the Winter Creative Escape, you guys will have seen this already, but this is what we're going to do for the celebration celebration. This is the project that everybody gets, and there's different ways you can earn your spot there, which I just listed. And so you'll get um, some paper to decorate the top and some ribbon, and it is a photo box. And so I found pictures of my lovely fur babies, um, Sammy and Summer. And so what you'll get is the paper um, and some embellishments to decorate a box and some ribbon. And you will have to come up with your own pictures. You don't have to use pictures. You could make an inspirational box. You can make pockets. Um, and basically you'll get 
12 different pieces of designer paper to use throughout your box. And I'm going to be using the rainbows and happiness for you guys though. So it's a very, going to be a very fun, cheerful box. And you can choose to put photos on it if you want. You could do inspirational things like this. And so and there's my mom with Sammy. And so these are my fur babies. Neither one are with me at the moment. <laughs> Always in my heart though. And so it's like an accordion book. And so the other thing that you could do with it, people talked about at the escape, is that you could give this as a birthday present or a Christmas present to some, well, not Christmas, but a birthday present to somebody you know and put pockets and then put gift cards. Everyone that flips up, you could put a gift card in there. So you could do like $10 gift cards, $5 gift cards. So this is the, the, the free project that you can um, make at the celebration celebration and you earn, you can only earn a spot. You cannot buy your way into it. <laughs> the only way is to earn a spot. So I did want to share that with you. And again, for the celebration celebration, I won't be using abstract beauty paper. I'm going to be using the rainbows and sunshine designer paper that's from celebration. So, so that was something I wanted to go over. You guys, if you're curious about the celebration celebration, just go to my website and the, um, the event, if I look on my calendar just real quick, if you guys know you're going to qualify, you can mark the dates. Um, it's going to be uh, March 2nd and the 5th in person, and the online is March 3rd. So, Mo, I have you signed up already. Kathy Groves, <laughs> you're signed up already. <laughs> so, all right. So, we, um, and then Summer Creative Escape. Uh, if you guys are interested, I know I just was touched on this briefly. I do have a bunch of people already penciled in. I only have one person who's paid. <laughs> I have one person that's paid for it already. Chris Dudranke did. So um, that's awesome. Um, I do have, um, if you go to July 14th on my calendar of events, I did publish one day already. And, um, ooh, did I do that? I think I did. I have to add the registration form to it, but... I'm penciling people in. I'm trying to coordinate how many people are going to be each day. And so if anybody is on the fence and over 50% like riding that, um, that you want to come to the escape and you haven't told me already, I highly recommend you tell me now. Uh, it doesn't mean it's permanent. If you something comes up and you change your mind, um, that's okay. But what I'm really trying to do is balance the days and when people are coming so that I can weigh that good so that we don't have... 30 people that want Saturday, right? Because that's not going to happen. <laughs> and so, because uh, I'm limited on the number of seats that I have here. So uh, it, I did do a, a video this past weekend that and it went over at what, what all happened here, you guys. <laughs> I, I like lifted up the skirt and showed you everything that was in this place <laughs> and over there. And uh, it's a great time. Uh, I have a bunch of people now that, hi, Carmen Melendez, I have a bunch now, extra people that are flying in, driving in from all over the country, and it's awesome. I love it. And so if you are on the fence about doing something like that and you need a specific day, um, I advise you to reach out to me and tell me what you're thinking, and I can pencil you in, and then as the time gets closer, you can always make that commitment uh, and pay for the registration. So, um, yeah, so that's the Summer Creative Escape. Um, by this weekend, for sure, I will have all the days um, out there on my calendar for July 14th, 15th, 16th, 17th, and probably that Wednesday, you guys. I think I have to add Wednesday, and there'll be a registration form. Hi, Terry. So look for that by the end of the weekend. I'll have that out there for you guys. And um, there was a date to the stamp -a stack You guys, I looked at the calendar, and I, I thought to myself, oh, no. <laughs> uh, I originally had the stamp a stack of birthday cards online Facebook live class set for uh, February 4th, I think. I don't have February up, so I was looking for it. I think it was set for February 4th, whatever that Thursday is, and or the 5th. I, it was the Friday, actually, the Friday. Ink, paper, scissors is the 3rd. Stamp a stack was going to be the 4th. And I, you guys, I, it dawned on me that I leave for Florida. Uh, my mom and my brother are, and I are going to Florida to visit my aunt and uncle down in Venice. And I can't pull it together. I haven't even designed the cards yet. I, <laughs> like, whoa, <laughs> how is this going to work? And then Anna to help me prep, <clears throat> that's not going to work. So I actually did push that out. Hi, Penny Powell. Hi, France. Thanks for sharing, guys. Um, I did push the stamp a stack of birthday cards out to February 20th. It's a Sunday afternoon. And I put it at 3 p.m. Central Time. 
and um, that will give me, buy me a little more time. I'm going to keep the in-person for that Saturday. So if you're local and you want to do it in person, I'm, I'm keeping it because I can pull it together. I'm um, kidding and everything after we get back. My mom and I can work on that afterwards, but I can't get stuff mailed out before, but I would have to mail it by Wednesday and that's not going to happen. So, okay. So schedule change, you guys, this is what I talk about that. If you have a printed copy, um, I did update it already on my website. So if you go to the newsletter section of my website and look at the PDF, I already have it updated on there to February 20th. But if you have a paper copy, you might want to just cross off the 4th and put February 20th. So uh, thanks for your understanding on that. Um, I do have a retreat coming up, you guys, uh, March 12th and 13th. It's an in-person retreat only. I am not doing it online. <laughs> I haven't even fathomed the idea of doing an online retreat. Um, what I do is, and I've done this at a hotel in the past, uh, two years ago, and with how successful the summer and winter creative escapes are here in person, what I'm doing is hosting my retreat here in the hive, and I have to cap it at nine people. Uh, so I already have six signed up. Um, I'm offering it as a one-day or a two day. So you can sign up for both Friday and Saturday, or you could sign up for Saturday. No, I'm sorry. It's Saturday and Sunday and not Friday. So you could sign up for both Saturday and Sunday, and you could either do Saturday or Sunday. So there's a couple different options. Hi, Wanda. Uh, so uh, it's in person only, like I had just mentioned, and everybody's going to get a dedicated space about four and a half feet, five feet. And you have that to work at. You were going to get lunch. You're going to get goodie bag. You're going to get uh, make and takes from me as well. But basically it's your time to craft and get things done that you've been meaning to get done. Sometimes it's hard to find that time inside our house <laughs> to get our stamping and get our cards done and get our scrapbooking done. And so hi Brenda Little. And so this is going to be a retreat where you come and bring your stuff and you can work on it um, all weekend long. So I'm going to be publishing the information for my retreat by Oh, I put tomorrow. I'm going to try to do it tomorrow. Hi, Kay Weir. So watch for the retreat. You guys, the scavenger hunt is due by January 31st, okay? So if um, you know what I want to do really quick, as long as a bunch of you are watching, I am going to run through and call out the names of those people who have sent me the scavenger hunts completed already. Um, if I do not call your name, don't worry. We just got to tell me where you sent it. Tell you guys, when you email it to me and you text it to me and you Facebook message to me, it's all over the place. And I have to get it to a, a spot where I can print it because there's no way on this earth that I can grade papers from my phone. I do not do that. I'm a paper person. So I ultimately have to get these printed. And texting is the hardest way to get a picture because I have to download it and then I have to email it to myself. And that's a lot of work. I'll tell you. So email is always the best or mail. You guys send me a letter. <laughs> I love it when you mail me your, your scavenger hunts because then I don't have to reprint them. Um, so Anna Schaffer, I have yours. Sue Volt, I have yours. Judy Bobo, I have yours. And you did send it to me on my phone and I uploaded it and I downloaded it and I, I printed it. So I got it. Anna Rebidu, I have yours. Chris Dudarenki, I have yours. Elaine Rebeck, I have yours. Carmen Melendez, I have yours. Kathy Jackson, I have yours. And Deb Norman. If I did not call your name and that little bit there, I did not print off your scavenger hunt, even if you sent it to me, in the hustle and the bustle of the holidays and the winter creative escape, I potentially missed it. So um, that's okay. It's, I'm human, right? So what I need to know is I'm calling that out early in case you did send it to me. If you could um, resend it to me or tell me when you sent it, I can go look for it. Um, so Penny says, evening, miss your smiling face. Hubby has been in the hospital for a week with COVID pneumonia, been a scary time. He's home. Okay. So happy to hear he's home. Get, stay out of the hospital if you can avoid it. <laughs> Don't want to be there. <laughs> so I'm so happy to hear that he's home. All right. I lost you guys. It kicked me out. Hi, Zaina. Hi, Doris. Okay. Oh, yes. You can always catch the replay. It's early for you guys. So, okay. So that was the scavenger hunt. So, all right. What is coming up though? We talked about tonight. It's the January monthly class. You guys, I do have Maybe I had 10 card kits left, sets of cards. So if we get through the card class tonight and you think, oh my gosh, I wish I'd have these card kits, I still have some. I can pop them in the mail or have them here for porch pickup, or I still have class Saturday morning. So if you want to attend in person at 10 a.m., you could make these cards with me. I have a small crew, so um, 
their, their space, so in case you want. I'll flip the camera down now, and what I'm gonna do is run really quick through. You guys, I have four classes, like tonight, Sunday, Monday, and Wednesday. So I'm gonna ro roll through those. I have space at all of those. So if you have forgotten or need to get signed up for a class, now's your time. Like, let me know, email me, um, text me, call me, message me, somehow message me. So I'm gonna flip down. So tonight, you guys, these are the ones we're making. Hi, Carol Jefferson. All right, so these are the ones we're doing tonight. There are four or three Valentine's Day-ish cards. You guys, on Sunday, we're gonna do Let's Just Stamp feature Sailing Home. It's at 2 p.m. Central. Um, Diane has two kits left from her class that she did Tuesday night, and I have two card sets left, like classes left. So these are what we're doing Sunday at 2 p.m. Central. All right, then on Monday night, no, Wednesday. Oh, Wednesday night. So Monday night, this is in person. And then Wednesday night, you guys, this is live in the hive with a Facebook live. It's the Sweet Talk card class. So we're going to make these four cards in person on Monday and then via Facebook Live Wednesday. Uh, Kelly will be live on Thursday night uh, to do the Paper Pumpkin Live. Uh, there was some delay in receiving products to put the Paper Pumpkins together for the month of January. So fingers crossed that we get the Paper Pumpkin in time for Kelly to do the Facebook Live next week, Thursday, because uh, I'll be leaving for Florida on Thursday morning. I'll be back on Tuesday. Oh, I got to tape a tip Tuesday. Okay, so just so you know, Kelly will be live a week from tonight. And then the next class right after that, you guys, is Ink, Paper, Scissors. And it's the Bloom Where You're Planted. Uh, so we're going to make these four cards. I have plenty of spots that I'm, I have the I'm planning card kits in my head, how many I'm going to make. And I can always order the product at the last minute if anybody signs up. But I do have an example of what's going out to somebody uh, that ordered this. It's, um, it's $36 mailed. Right, so what happens though is it's one of my product-based classes. So you get a roll of ribbon, you get the pack of embellishments, and you get a quarter pack of the designer series paper along with the four card kits. Um, oh, Luann, please resend it. Yep, if you sent it on December 10th and I don't have it yet, <laughs> it's lost somewhere in the shuffle. <laughs> so, all right. Um, so Deb Norman, you just said your paper pumpkin hasn't billed yet, but my customer's paper has shipped. Interesting. They had a lot of issues with the billing, you guys, for the paper pumpkins. Uh, I suggest if you're um, not sure, you could check uh, your account to see once. Um, I know that my credit card had been compromised last month, and so mine failed because of billing, because of the credit card networking. And one was going to automatically update because I fixed the credit card issue. One was going to automatically update and the other one wasn't set to. So they were able to help me. I called on it and they were able to help me. So hi, Angela Knutson. Woohoo. Now back to work. Loved it and shared it. And now back to work. Got to make the money to spend it on stamps, right? <laughs> All right. So you guys, that's what's coming up over the next two weeks, basically. So much stuff is happening. Um, so that's kind of what I wanted to go through. And after class tonight, we'll do the drawing for the celebration. And I have the winners of some of the cards. I'm going to share mystery cards with you. Um, oh, good, Deb. I'm glad it'll be billed soon. Kathy got her billing receipt. Awesome. I'm going to share my mystery cards with you. We'll do the mystery card winner and we'll actually do door prizes. I forgot to do a door prize for the celebration card class and we'll do one for tonight. So boom. Okay. You guys good to go? Um, one last thing before I forget. I have one DSP sampler left, and it has a name on it that if Marsha Long is watching, uh, I know she was on my tip Tuesday or she was watching me live another night. I'm trying to reach her this way. I've sent her three emails to ask her if she still wanted the DSP sampler. So calling Marsha Long, um, if I don't hear from Marsha Long by the end of tonight, because I've been holding on to this for about two weeks, um, this DSP sampler is up for grabs. So this is what I'm talking about. It's a DSP sampler. It is the book that has all the different swatches of the designer paper and the note swatches. Um, I will take, if anybody is interested, send me an email. I will start a wait, you know, so the first person who emails me that is interested, if Marsha doesn't contact me by midnight tonight, it's going to be yours. Okay. Uh, it was $25 uh, cash check price or 34 with shipping. So I'm giving Marsha till midnight tonight. And if not, if somebody else is interested in this, 
I want to move it on out of here, you guys. It's time sensitive. This little, this book is awesome to use right now during the catalog while it's while it's actually being used, right? Okay, so if you're interested, email me or text me, call me, Facebook message me, however you want to get a hold of me, but don't put it in a post in this video, please. <laughs> so, all right. So we're going to do roll call really quick, you guys. Angela Knutson, Deanna Stell, Carmen Melinda, Sandy Wicklander, Judy Krueger, Leslie McMinn, Rachel Horsch, Jody Storman, Peggy Hitt, Kathy King, Amy Ponce, Barb Johnson, Mo Stites, Carla Real, and Fancy Nancy Billets. Woohoo! So thanks for sharing, Betty Ray. I appreciate it. So we will do the drawing for the people who place orders later, but we're going to get right in the thick of it with the um, card kits for tonight. You guys, I brought down the card kits for Sunday and for Wednesday, so I don't have to race upstairs because I forgot them. Woohoo! Hi, Susie Fick from Illinois. All right, so we're going to start with first things first. Um, which one? I don't know. Let's flip down here. <laughs> so the three cards we're doing tonight are these three. So we're going to start with the robot. Um, robot, robot, robot. So there, <laughs> and you guys have, if you like this card, you have Carissa Alberts to thank because she convinced me to use this stamp set for this card class. And <laughs> she's like, oh, I gotta get the embellishments. I had to bend down and get these embellishments. She's like, people will love this card. And it's cute if you have kids or if you have grandkids. And I will be the first to admit I don't have either. <laughs> and so when I see kids sets, I don't, generally get so excited. And so she's like, you need to do this set. It's so cute and adorable. And I think that now that I used it, I have to agree that it is a cute set. So the stamp set is called Nuts and Bolts. And there are three little robots in here. Uh, the one with the heart, a flower, and the weird one that's doing a little dancey dance. <laughs> and so what's awesome about this card is uh, you could do it either way. Carissa helped design this with me. And when we were working on it, we couldn't choose which robot we liked better. We liked that one and we liked that one. Um, and so if you don't have this set, you're going to figure out something else that you can use for on your tag. But we left it for in person that people could either put their card horizontal or they could put it vertical. Hi, Julie Ledbetter. And so that's what's neat about this layout is that it could go either way. <laughs> so, and what is awesome is that whatever robot you stamp on the outside, the inside has the opposite robot. So, so then he, they both get used or she, whatever. Robots are a sex, I guess. So <laughs> it, <laughs> and then the happy Valentine's day uh, comes from gumball greetings. And so I have that right here. I had no idea that there was a happy Valentine's Day in here until I was hunting for a happy Valentine's Day. And here, lo and behold, in Gumball Greetings, we have a happy Valentine's Day. So boom, awesome. So these are the two stamp sets that got used. If you're wondering where this ticket came from, the ticket came from the Hey Sports Fan die set, which is in the mini catalog. And we can grab that really quick, just so you guys can see where stuff is at. So, hey, sports fan, if you, I always go to the front to find the sweets for the numbers. So, hey, sports fan is this set, and there is a die right there. <laughs> it just worked out perfectly. It's got this kind of robot look to it with the edges like that. And so, that's where that tick, it's a ticket, actually. So, that's where that came from. And then there's also embossing on here, and that is embossed with the stripes and splatters embossing folders. So, there's two. It's a set but we only use the stripes. And that's in the back here. Chris, it doesn't have kids or grandkids either, but your nephew will enjoy it. So there you go. <laughs> so that's a really good point. Carissa has a nephew and he will really enjoy this. So, you know, I have nieces and nephew too, but I don't, I don't, I don't know if I, I don't know if I send them cards. <laughs> I send the family cards. Um, so stripes and splatters is here and that's where the stripes comes from. So a little bit about that. Um, and then really quick, I'm going to grab my book to show you the DSP. Hang on. So the design, so this is that designer series paper sampler book that I was showing you that I have one left. So the paper is called Sweet Talk and in the cards tonight, I actually, all three of them use Sweet Talk. This is one of the patterns. This is one of the patterns, and then another one gets used is this one, and then that one. So all of the designer paper for tonight 
comes from the Sweet Talk 12 by 12 VSP. All right, so let's see what we got. This one you don't need much for ink, actually. There's only two ink pads that got pulled out for this one, um, a memento pad and also a gray pad. There's actually a stamp in here that has, <laughs> it looks like, it's standing on um, like level ground. Hi, Chris Nebom. And so I like things to be grounded and not floating in midair. <laughs> so it was awesome because he looked like he's standing on the ground. Uh, pulled in some, um, I, oh, Doris is also from Iowa. Very nice. I have lots of gals that are from Iowa. Gray granite shimmer ribbon is part of that kit for you guys. So this is what you get in your card kit from me. In addition, you get the embellishments if, in case you're wondering. Um, I don't do any prior stamping. I don't do any um, prior gluing or adhering, adhering. Basically, when you get card kits from me, you'd have to do any stamping. So you need stamps, ink, and then adhesive. So you'd have to stamp with ink and then glue, adhere it together. So I don't know. <laughs> I should have asked you guys to vote if you want the vertical or the horizontal. Hi, Judy Bobo. Oh, there's something that I love about the flower one. I uh, like gardener. I like gardening. And so when I saw him holding a flower, it was awesome. But on this one, we put silver pearls for his eyes. <laughs> we thought that looked super cool. Okay, so you also got silver pearls. You got, I think, five silver pearls in with your card kit. Um, this is already die cut for you. I'm sorry, this is already embossed for you. So that's got that stripes. It's one of those skinny folders. So it's only about three inches. You have um, two pieces of white cardstock that are both four by five and a quarter. One's for the outside and one's for the inside. And then you have your ticket and then you have some designer series paper. These hearts are, oh, you guys are saying horizontal, cool. <laughs> that's what I was gonna pick too. So these hearts are all over the board. There's some going this way, some going that way, some going, and so there's really no rhyme or reason. Yes, Judy, Google eyes would work for this one especially. So there's really no rhyme, rhyme or reason to the hearts. It just, <laughs> like that one's facing the right way and that one's not, and then so I'm gonna put it this way, but then I see all of them upside down. So I'm gonna put my paper like that, because at least I've got like two that are halfway okay and one that's good. So we're gonna do horizontal. Oh, Melanie Foy likes the vertical because of the pearl idea. It's so cute having his eyes like that. So we're, let's get some stamping done, though. How about that? So we are going to grab our ink, and <laughs> there's a lot of stuff going on here. So we've got our sentiments. We got a sentiment, and then our robot dudes, and our black ink. So we're going to do a little robot on the front ticket piece. I'm gonna get a scrap here just to put underneath. So my Memento ink pads are not the most amazing ink pads in the world. They get love, I'll be honest, they get a lot of love. And every time I re-ink them, they just don't seem like they hold uh, an ink. So my tip with Memento, if that happens to you, you wanna store them upside down to begin with because um, the way that the nature of the ink pad is you always wanna store the ink pad upside down so the ink stays at the surface. So I always store this upside down. Um, you don't have to worry about the other ink pads because they're naturally upside down in the case. But when you're inking this up, I just have this tendency that I just have to ink it up so, so good and make sure you get a lot of ink on there. And then when you go to stamp, um, you just, I can't see it. <laughs> That's why I don't generally have white underneath a white. So give it a second, you guys. The marinating is the most important thing to do with a memento pad. Well, with almost every pad, I'd say you get a lot crisper of an image. Give it some time. Don't squish really hard in case you have uh, ink on the edge, then you get a halo. But I am just letting that sit and marinate. And when you do that, it really allows the ink to transfer to the paper. So you get a nice crisp image. Okay, so that's that dude. Then there is the other dude. Yeah, or dudette, whatever. <laughs> the other robot, the heart robot. And inking it up really good again. And he's going to go in the bottom corner. Yeah, <laughs> put him in the corner. All right, so the sentiments. This one says, you make my heart go beep. And that fits there really good. Um, whereas this one, I'm nuts and bolts about you. That's generally not going to fit there because of it being too long. That's why I use the I'm nuts and bolts about you over there. 
Um, so we're gonna stamp that in a second, but I was just giving that time to marinade. And then we're gonna do, you make my heart go beep. So when you guys get a kit like this at home and you don't necessarily have the exact same stamp set, I challenge you and encourage you to look through your Stampin' Arsenal to see what you do have uh, so that you don't necessarily have to buy it to match. And hey, if you love it, buy it, right? <laughs> I'm not gonna stop you from buying it if you really like it, but you don't have to always use the exact same stamps that I use. Okay, so you make my heart go beep, beep, beep. And on the inside, we're gonna do the gumball greetings. Happy Valentine's Day. And... Oh man, my piercing mat is <laughs> it went missing. So we'll put the we'll put the little silicone mat underneath to get some extra cushion. Extra cushion. Alright, so happy Valentine's Day is gonna go right there. So this font actually looked really nice with the stamps versus frilly like. So we got happy Valentine's Day. And I believe that might be it for the black ink. So next we have the memento. Nope, the <laughs> smoky slate. I was looking at it. So this little, it's like ground kind of. I'm going to stamp that. And we shouldn't need this. So I'm going to move that out of the way. We're going to put a little bit of ground underneath his feet. I'm just kind of eyeballing where I think it needs to go. And then we're going to put some ground underneath this dude's feet. Perfect. Hi, Darcy Dutton. All right, that's it for the smoky slate. Then there are some hearts in the set. The stamp set has hearts. So I put them on a block, even though I didn't use them. Uh, this is what Judy Immel did, you guys. I'm gonna do it on this card because I thought it was super cool. She used hearts and she put them up like he's got hearts here. Let's see what this looks like. Yep. So Blushing Bride is the color that kind of matches. She put a set of hearts there, a set of hearts there, and then we're gonna put one more. So it was like, <laughs> it's like a fish in a bowl and then the bubbles come out of the fish. Well, it's like the robot is dreaming and thinking about hearts and they're escaping out of his head. <laughs> so so that's what Judy Immel did. So I am I'm casing what Judy did. All right, so that was Blushing Bride. You could have used red as well. Um, for in this one, the heart is, um, I'm gonna do it in Flirty Flamingo. If it's Flirty Flamingo, I'll tell you, last night in class, everybody but maybe one or two did not believe that that color cover was the color that came out of that heart. So it is, so that's our inside. The flower, I'm coloring that in Pool Party. And I don't mind that I'm going over the center because there's going to be a silver pearl. So pool party comes in light and dark. And so I did just choose the dark one to color. And then the blends come in a smoky slate, a dark and a light combo. And how I did the robot, I actually, Carissa colored this one. She loves the color. So I put it in front of her and she's like, okay. And she colored it so good. But she did, and what I would do too is on these, the little bolts, these little like holding him together, those can get colored darker. So I'm going on those areas. Um, I did do his legs a little darker. Don't forget his little neck. <laughs> he does have a neck there. And then you could do his arms with the dark. And then you can pull in the light. And so when you go over the light or when you go over the dark with the light, you wanna blend it. If you just do one coat and don't blend it, you're gonna see the lines. Like, let's see if you guys can see. So I did, and you can see it looks splotchy right up there. So, hi Mary. So what I'm gonna do is keep going over and then it will kind of like hide the dark and the light. It kind of like blends them together. That's what these markers are awesome for, is to blend together. So right now you can see the line where it's dark right there. And then if I go over and do one more coat, it actually, it blends really good, okay? Then what we're gonna do, oh, you said to do the top and ears look dark too. Yep, you can color it however. And then what I do is, so I just use the big brush end. Then what I do is I graduate to the smaller end because the tight little areas here, 
I have a hard time with the brush tip. So I like to use the little fine tip of this marker here. So coloring in his little feet and his little fingers, <laughs> not really fingers, but whatever they are. Okay, don't give him a little bit of the gray eye because <laughs> that wouldn't be good. You definitely wanna keep his eyeballs white. And we're just gonna come in right here. So this coloring is not too difficult. <laughs> I do admit it's not the craziest thing, but to do the light and the dark, it really helps to accentuate those little dots. And I'm gonna pull back there. Oh, I wanna go right there again. Okay, so there's our robot all colored in. Now that we have that all done, that's probably the meat and potatoes of the stamping. You know what? And whoever gets this can color in that robot. <laughs> I'm lazy. I like to decorate the inside with the focal image. Um, and maybe if I get around to it, I'll go back and color him. But I would do him the same way. I do like the dots a little bit darker, and then I do everything else a little bit lighter. So if I get to it, I'll color it later. But I don't think you guys need to watch me color another little robot. So what we're going to do is we're going to put adhesive on the backs of a couple pieces of paper and we'll get them glue in. So I'm gonna glue the, the if this is Coastal Cabana, the blue here. And that one's gonna go down first onto our white mat. Um, so all of you guys that did take the class with me so far um, via the online format, you would have received the PDF tutorial. Hi, Marianne. Hi, Pauline. Thanks for sharing. I sent the PDF tutorial yesterday. While I was home here on my lunch hour, or I sent it Tuesday, I can't remember exactly, but you should have that in your inbox. So uh, in case you're looking for it, if you're on the Be Happy Stampers team with me, um, I did put it in the file section of the Facebook group so you can access it there. Plus I emailed it to everybody on the team. So anybody that is on the team should have access to this as well. So what I did is I just put the designer series paper uh, on the top portion here. All right, now we cannot forget about our ribbon. This happened to a couple people in class. Um, you gotta remember to adhere the ribbon tails behind so that um, they are nice and secure behind. If you forget, you can make it work by just gluing them, but I generally put the two pieces of tear and tape on the back and I hold it in front so I can see if it's straight. If you try to do it upside down like this, and try to guess, it's gonna be potentially crooked. So I like to eyeball it from the front. And because I have that tape back there, I know that it's waiting for me to put my tail behind. So I always put the ribbon down, watching it from the front, and then just flipping my tails over, catching the tape. And I always like to finish with another piece of tear and tape on each side, <laughs> making it my ribbon sandwich. And then all you need to do is add a little bit more liquid glue around the back here. I don't generally go over the top of that tear and tape again. This gets put on our card front. You have about an eighth of an inch margin all the way around. And our ticket is popped up with dimensionals. So I'll grab a few. I like to use about six on a piece this big, so I'll do that many and one here and then that will go on the front of our card if you want to like sponge the edges of your ticket with some color you could do that as well to make it pop even more and what I'm doing is lining up this one right here with that one here to help me make it even <laughs> so as long as your ribbon was even you should be good and I noticed on this little guy, my pearl, he shimmy shimmy shaked all the way over and he belongs right there. <laughs> okay, so grab your take your pick tool. There's, I got a putty end on one side and that allows me to push the pearl. I'm gonna put one in the center and I'm gonna put one over here. And I know that you should do odds, right? Floral arrangements tell you to do odds when it comes to making floral arrangements. But I feel like the flower doesn't count in this case. It's part of him. And so one, two, three is how I look at that. Thanks for sharing, Marilyn. All right, um, Stella, we can't forget about our girlfriend here. Yeah, she is not taking a break right now. Um, you could definitely Stella your whole robot. So Stella is a glitter pen, a controlled glitter. 
it definitely doesn't shake off and leave glitter all over your pants. <laughs> so uh, you can definitely Stella your robot and definitely do that little flower. So you guys on the camera, you generally cannot see what Stella does to a card, but when you get it up close and personal, you can see the color comes through. Um, the Stella, like the glitter comes through. So there you go, guys. We're almost done. One more thing here. We're gonna glue in our inside. So when it comes to liquid glue, I try to only make, generally on a piece like this, my inside mat, I do a square. Sometimes I'll do a slash through it, but I always try to stay maybe a half of an inch, quarter of an inch away from the edge. Depending on how thick you get your liquid glue, it can ooze out and people don't like that. <laughs> we don't want oozy glue. So there you have it. Our first card for the night is Finito. And are you guys gonna name Mr. Robot? What would you name him? <laughs> oh, are we gonna come up with something? I'm trying to think what we would call him. I, so like for some reason, Arthur came to my mind. I don't know why Arthur, but he felt like an Arthur to me. Um, <laughs> definitely, probably is not Arthur, <laughs> but I didn't even use that stamp, <laughs> so I cleaned that one anyways. So guys, this is a Xiaomi. It's, um, you can get it through Stampin' Up! through me, and I, you can just put water on it, or you can spray uh, rubber stamp cleaner, uh, which we have as well. But I always like to clean my stamps right away so that they don't fall over and leave black on paper that's right around them or my desk here. So squeaky, squeaky, squeaky. Robbie, I like that, Brenda. Robbie the robot. That could work, okay? You got the R-O-B-R-O-B -B -B going. Okay, so let's move this stuff out of the way. And we'll get set up here for the next one. Thanks, Denise. I appreciate that. All right. So move, movie, movie, movie here, here, and there. And the next card we're going to do is our Valentine, <laughs> of course, our Valentine's Day card. So Wally. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> okay. You guys, the other thing I forgot to do which we'll do after we're done with the cards. I have all these cards to share with you. I got all this happy mail in the last week and a half or so, and I need to remember to share that with you guys, okay? So Robbie the robot and Wally and Arthur are done for right now. <laughs> Roberta, I like it. All right, so this one is the one we're gonna work on next. It could be definitely a wedding card, you guys, or... Um, an anniversary card. It doesn't have to be Valentine's Day. So it's kind of more universal in that sense. Uh, the set that's used here is called Love and Happiness. I do have a sad face because the dies are currently on um, back order. This is a hybrid set. The There's an embossing folder that comes with the dies and the heart comes out of the center. I should go grab it so you guys can see it. Hi, John Reader. Give me one second, guys. I'll grab it. So there is, these are the dies. There's not a lot of dies that go with it. There's only a few, but there's an embossing folder that this comes as a set. And mine definitely has gotten some eaten done. <laughs> and this is the folder. So there's a heart right in the middle and this die fits in here that apparently you can die cut at the same time that you have your paper in there and it cuts the heart out and embosses. So that's what the hybrid embossing folders are all about. This stamp, stamp set is on, let's look and see if we can find it real quick. Love and happiness is on page, oh, way in the beginning. Page 11. Uh, the dies are on back order. The stamp set is still available. And the stamp set comes with all these different sentiments. So it's called the love and happiness bundle, but it's the bouquet of love hybrid embossing folder. And the stamps are all different lovey doveys here. I think my favorite one in here is Valentine's Day greeting or Valentine greetings. Um, if there's a lot of for marriages and anniversaries is what's a, a lot in here. So um, I was happy that they had a Valentine's Day one in. So that's where this comes from. Um, the heart that you guys get for this kit, it was cut out first with a die. And then an embossing folder got brought in from the annual catalog called Ornate Floral. So that heart, after it got die cut, it got 
ran through the embossing folder, and then we use a sponge to add the color. This bottom portion is embossed with the heart folder. So it's actually embossed with that. And let's see if I can grab my kit and I can show you some more pieces then. So this is what you guys would get in your kit from me. There's This is your heart that gets die cut and then embossed. So you can see all the flowers. It's the ornate floral folder. And then this little heart comes from the die set as well. And then here is the embossing folder. So when this got embossed, the heart, we made sure it was horizontal and it was like over more on the right side than the left side because that's kind of where the heart got centered. Had it been more to the other way, you might have seen it behind. You have a piece of white. Hi, Karen. You have a piece of white for your inside. So both of these are four by five and a quarter. You guys have this little scrap. It's not a scrap, it's actually a die. And it, it does come from, oh, I have it out. Um, oh, it's right here. This die comes from this set as well. And there's this insy tinsy little guy that comes from there too. I actually used him in the card that we're making next week. He got used right there. <laughs> He's a little one, I should say. He's a little one. Um, so Cindy, you asked about your screen freezing. I am watching it like a hawk with you guys. So I can see that I'm watching with you and I am not freezing at the moment. And so we should be good to go. Uh, there's a little white. Ethel, I'm not sure if I said hi to you, but hi Ethel. Um, so then your designer paper, this is three inches wide and it's three and three sixteenths high. And the reason I did this is I wanted just to show you how easy it is. So I cut all your strips and you guys have your strips ready to go in your card kits, but it's just three inches. And so when you have three inches, you can get four columns of that out of a um, 12 by 12 piece of paper. So when you do um, like strips like this, uh, it's nice to use skinny strips and you can make them all the same or you could actually change them up. And in another card that we're doing next week, it is similar using strips of designer paper, but in this case, all four of them are different sheets of paper. So you're not using all the same sheet. So, all right, so you guys, this is from that paper. Your other side is lollipop. So if you like the Haley lollipops on the other side, you could definitely do that. All right, so your bottom base here is Blushing Bride, eight and a half by five and a half, scored at four and a quarter. And there's really not a lot of stamping. So let's just do that and we'll be done with it. Uh, on the inside, <laughs> apparently nothing. So let's see here. I have one that has something. So this one, I pulled out some hearts. This um, trio of hearts is from the set we're using in the next card. It's that little set right there. So we needed something. We can't have empty insides. <laughs> so we're definitely going to stamp that. And we have a sponge dauber for our heart. So Valentine's greetings. That's what's in here. Um, Cindy, oh, so thanks, Judy Bobo, for that recommendation. Um, she's saying that if you have a phone and can watch it on there, it won't freeze as much. I also know that if you have the comments up, sometimes that helps if you turn them off um, and don't watch the comments. Um, because when you're downloading the video with comments, that takes extra juice. So, again, I don't have my... <laughs> My piercing mat went in a drawer when we cleaned up after the escape. It must have just went elsewhere. So we're going to put these three little guys on the bottom. I always decorate the inside. So there's our set of three hearts. And our Valentine's greetings is going to go onto our tag. But we're going to see how straight that is. It is crooked. I can tell. I could see that it was on the stamp wonky. So let's see if that helps. The V went up and the S went up. It's like, it's crooked. So let's try this again. Better. Okay. So here's what I suggest. When you guys get little labels from me, <laughs> you get one generally. And if you're uncertain about your stamping, so the side that's rougher is the back and the side that's smoother is the front. If you're not certain of how you're going to stamp it, because it's a red rubber stamp, you can't see through it. You can stamp the back first and then practice to see how it goes. Hi, Barb King. And, okay, 
So generally what happens is people say, oh, I do really good on the first try. And then they say, try the second time and they don't do so good. So we're going to try to replicate what I just did. <laughs> I mean, give it a second. Just make sure your ink hits the paper. Okay, good deal. Yeah, I like it. I like it a lot. Okay, so let's now pick up our dauber. So these daubers are on back order. They're not on back order. They're out of inventory. So now if you guys caught it, but the beginning of the year... Uh, or they might have even started in December, but basically if something is out of stock, they do not do back orders at the moment because of the inventory supply issues, the cost of back orders. So if something's out of stock, you can't add it to your order now. And the daubers are out of stock at the moment. So it's a set of five of them for a few bucks. It's not that much. So I just took, I don't know if you guys saw what I was doing. <laughs> so I was jibber jabbering. I was just frosting the edges with some red ink. And on this guy, what I'm gonna do is slightly hover over the top of the raised part, and that's gonna add color. And you don't wanna to have too heavy of a hand because you're only wanting to brush over the top. So you can see I've done the right side, but I haven't done the left side. And what it does, it just makes it pop. So anytime you do an embossing, uh, it's good. And you wanna add a little color, just take a sponge, I, like a sponge works, but I would say a sponge dauber. I feel like I have more control of this on my finger and it's contained in this little area. Sponge daubers work really good for this. And so the harder you go, the more that in the recessed areas you're going to get ink too. But that's what it just makes it look, those flowers look really pronounced and sharp. So, all right, that might be it for our red ink. So we're going to retire that one for right now. And... Let's put our card together. And I just saw that was so shiny. You guys, there's some, wherever the camera hits it, just at that angle, it just wants to blind you with that light. Okay. All right. So remove that. And I do have this popped up. So we'll prep that with some dimensionals. Hi, Marsha, coming in late. <laughs> I always say better late than never, right? And then this little guy, he's going to get two on his humps here. Boom and boom. And I think that might be it for those. We'll take these off right away. And, all right, no rhyme or reason. Let's get some glue happiness here. So nothing's our, oh, there's a bow. <laughs> I gotta go get my red ribbon. You guys are gonna get a bow made tonight. <laughs> so when you guys take a class with me and there's bows and it's not a product-based class, meaning it's, one of these classes where it's free with an order or it's fee-based, as in um, not product-based. So product-based, you guys always get a roll of ribbon, like generally, and I don't open it and make your bows for you. But whenever you get a class like this for me, I make your bows. So you got your little red bow already made for you. But I always like to occasionally, <laughs> from time to time, make a bow if I can. So I must not, I've put one in the kit, so we're gonna make one together. So you just want to make sure your heart's facing the right way. And that's going to get put on here. So those mats were both four by five and a quarter. And I do have bow makers for sale, guys. I have a friend from the Johnsburg area. Um, I used to babysit his kids. So him and his wife, um, they are my bow maker hookups now. Uh, different source. <laughs> and um, he designed them a little bit bigger um, so that they have a little more surface area. They, I will advise they... Um, he has the, the holes for the nails are a very tight fit. And so you got to use a pliers the first time you get it from me. Like once you get a bow maker from me, you got to grab a pliers to help pull out those nails. And as you use them more and more, they get loosened up. So um, we're going to put one of these here. So the, the red mat is four inches high. And then these little strips are three and three sixteenths high. And then one inch wide. There's no rhyme or reason. I didn't care about the order. They don't generally match up appropriate. Like I could have left them in um, order, but I didn't care because these little dots, you can't really tell. Brenda loves the bow maker. Woohoo! I would not make bows if I did not have a bow maker, you guys. I will be 100% honest. So there's that. And then this guy, he hangs out right about here. I'm. Oh man, <laughs> hang on. So the glue doesn't stick so well You gotta to this embossed image part. So you got to give it a second. But there's a heart right here. So I'm trying to kind of like put it right over the top of that. Oh, oh, Kathy, your hubby made. Oh, that's so awesome that he made you one. That's great. I love that. 
And this little guy goes right in the middle. And before I cover it up, I am gonna get Stella out and get the Stella on here. You could also Stella this part too. Oh, Feline, your bow maker went in the mail to you yesterday with your box. Oh, fun. <laughs> your bow maker and your tool caddy all in one surprise box. Yes, Susan, you caught me live. Woohoo! Okay, so this one I'm going to do flat. And this one, okay, so this heart is popped up once and this heart is popped up once. So that means over here, I'm going to make a double stack. And over here, I'm going to glue it a flat. So what do I mean by a double stack? A double stack is a double stack of dimensionals. So I'm gonna do one, two, buckle my shoe. And so we're gonna put one first, and I'm gonna put a second one, and then that will help keep it so it's flat, right? But over here, it looks like I'm gonna need another double stack. So we're going to do one right next to it, there, and Grab one more here. Hi, Jeannie Parker. <laughs> Did you make it to work on time on Monday? <laughs> I'm curious. I didn't know you had to work. <laughs> Dad said that you had to be there by 2.30. Oh my goodness. I thought, wow, you guys cut it really close leaving on Monday morning. So <laughs> thanks for sharing it, Jeannie. So I'm gonna just put a little liquid glue on that side. If you wanted to, just for measure, you could just put a single stack right there because that one's gonna rest on this pink heart. So there's a pink heart right there. So that's going something like this. All righty, Aphrodite. All right, we need to go get some red ribbon. I realize that it's not in my kit. So you guys are gonna get to see the bow maker in action. I'll go get this red bow ribbon. This is part of the Sweet Talk set, like the sweet. It's called Real Red um, Faux Linen Ribbon. Oh, you had to be at work at 5 p.m., but didn't make it back in time. Oh, okay. Well, 5 is still better than 2.30. Hi, Faye Gabby. All right, so bow maker, where are you? Where are you? Over here. Okay, so this is my old style of bow maker. So when you guys get it from me, there are two holes on the end, and the nails are super tight, so you do have to get a pliers to pull them out. This thing has been around the block a time or two, and so my nails are like loosey-goosey. So what happens over time is the more you use it and the more you pull it together, you see how those went together and versus being straight up, <laughs> okay? So that's not a bad thing. That just gives you more opportunity to have a different size bowl, okay? <laughs> so, so what you do, um, you guys, if you go to my page, my Facebook page, I did a video on this, a Tip Tuesday about a year ago, if you search for bow maker in my Facebook page, I did a, a video showing how to different like doubles and triples and two-sided ribbon. But ultimately I'm right-handed, so I take my loose end and I go about a good inch and a half over the edge. That should give you enough to have a tail on the other side. These cross like this. Um, hi, Jean Terwilliger. Then up and over. Oh, and you guys, I see everybody's, everybody must have gotten kicked out and then came back in. So, and then it went up and over, and now I'm just going to take these ends and make a knot. So up, the main thing is as I tighten, I go down and to the left and to the right. So that helps. I grab my ribbon scissors here to cut. So you, very, you waste very little ribbon, which is awesome. And then the main thing I do when I'm done with my ribbon is I have a piece of tape with a tab on it that's folded over, and that helps to make my ribbon secure and it doesn't go unraveling. And then I have a little tab to just pull it off really easily. Okay, so that ribbon is part of the mini catalog. Um, I, the other thing I did at some point is I added tape to the bottom of my nails because that helped to make them a little more sturdy in there. All right, so we'll set you over there. When it comes to ribbon, I like to use glue dots. And so I will put a glue dot in the middle of my bow, right where I think I want it. So it's gonna go right there and my middle of my bow is gonna stick to that. Now, you see where my tail is? He doesn't belong up there. <laughs> so <clears throat> get another mini glue dot and show him who's boss. So you're gonna put that mini glue dot where you think you want your ribbon tail to go and you're going to squish that, bring your ribbon down and then kind of put your tail into it. 
And so now it's better, right? He's where you want him. He's kind of lop, a floppy here. So I'm gonna grab one more glue dot and put that underneath the other tail where I want it. And then you can make your bow go exactly where you want it. And then after it's all said and done, and I've got my tails secure, I trim my tails <laughs> just like that. And then they look nice and cute and professional. Let's see if you guys get a little shot of that. So that's how I get my bows on my cards looking so nice. <laughs> and I, I put them where I want them to be. All right. Then we have in here some polished dots, which are part of the new mini catalog as well. You guys got three of them. And there's clear and there's this petal pink color. And I went for the clear on this card. So you can grab... Either got two large and a small, or you got two small and a large. So I put two up there, and I put one at the corner of my heart there. All right, so far, so good. So these are done then. You guys, whenever you get the kits from me, always know that you gotta be careful opening things up because you have little embellishments that wanna jump out and get you. All right. There's our second Valentine's Day card. But you guys, this could have been a wedding card. It could have been an anniversary card. It could have been a birthday card even. You know, honestly, uh, we've got our inside in and you could do a little sentiment. So boom, all right. Boom, shalaka laka boom. We got two done. We got our little robot, Roberta, Robbie, Arthur, and um, what did you say, Carissa? Wally. <laughs> That's right, Wally. <clears throat> cool. So the last card that we're going to do for this class is this one. I must say, you guys, I do love me my purple. <laughs> Highland Heather, Flirty Flamingo, A Little Blushing Bride, and this fa frayed white ribbon. So that's what we got going on here. Some designer series paper I showed you earlier. It was from Sweet Talk. So all the designer paper came from Sweet Talk tonight. So eight and a half by five and a half. Score it at four and a quarter. Burnish your edges. And vertical cards. So try to keep your card vertical. That'll help you remember that. This is what got a lot of people. I will be honest with you. <laughs> they are not the same size. The white that is bigger goes on the inside. And how your card kits always come to you is layered top to bottom. It's very rare that they're out of that order. So the bottom piece is generally your mat for your inside, okay? So if you're ever uncertain, what you have to do is just take your piece and put it on the inside and see, oh yeah, that's my mat for the inside. Um, I had caught a couple people that were gluing this piece to um, to this to these designer papers to the bigger piece and you had this big white border. I'm like, no, 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 let's get that off of there, okay? So that happens, hi Sandy, Sandy. I was watching a previous um, video and I saw, because I was getting names for the drawing, and you had posted your email address. Um, I should tell you that a lot of you guys, <laughs> first of all, well, Sandy, you put your email address in the comments. And I took that as to mean that I must have asked something about um, if you want to be my, on my newsletter, send me your email address. I'm not quite sure. But what I did is I added you to my email group. If you guys ever don't want to be on it, you can unsubscribe at any time. But I realized when I was adding Sandy, you guys, so a little in a nutshell, um, when you guys click subscribe to my newsletter on my website, uh, it goes into kind of a limbo area and I have to do something with it. I apparently figured that out. I, I like bubbles and dots connected. And so you only get emails from me if you're in a group. Like I have, I have tags, I should say, for people. I have a tag for card class local, so my local attendees, and I have card class long distance. So I have two different tags. And so if I'm doing an in-person only class, I tag the people that are local. Um, if I have a class that I'm doing for both, I tag both groups. But what happens is when you guys subscribe to my newsletter or like when you subscribe to my website through my website and put your email address in there, I have to go and add the tag. So I went through, don't tell Tyler, it was Tuesday night. <laughs> well, he went off to make popcorn or do something and I figured it out, so I started to go through them. So I went through and there were about 50 people since September that had subscribed to my website and I added the tag 
card class local or card class um, long distance. Because if I knew you were not, you know, if I don't know, I put long distance. So just so you guys know, if you did that a long time ago where you signed up to my my website and you haven't been getting emails from me, that is why I don't get a, like an alert that says, oh, you have a new subscriber. Like, okay. So I now know where to go to find it and I can t- like tag you guys. So again, if you get inundated with emails now from me, which I don't send more than, I don't know if I even do one a day. I don't know. It, it's rare, it very it rare. Um, it varies by day or week or month, what's going on. So if you ever get sick of my emails, all you have to do is click the unsubscribe button and you're gone. <laughs> you can be gone. It's all good. So, but yes, I learned that you guys. Okay. So hi, Yolanda. Um, in case you're wondering why you are never getting emails from me. So you're going to start getting emails if you did that. And again, now, if you want to sign up to get my emails, all you have to do is go to my website and put the, um, your email in my newsletter link a section uh, and you should be good to go. Woohoo! Okay. The things you know. Or the more you know, the reading rainbow, right? Okay, so your designer series paper. Um, you can flip both of those over. We can get glue happy. I don't know what to think about the back side of this paper. I'll be honest with you guys. I just can't get into. I think there's soda cans, but I don't mind covering up <laughs> the back side of it when I can see the front side of this one. Oh my goodness! I love these purple and pink hearts. They make me happy. Whew, so pretty. Okay, so this was a card we did for the Winter Creative Escape this weekend. So so those people who did um, that with me get this card kit again. Um, so that's awesome. And so you guys, are you worried that the middle does not meet? <laughs> Don't be worried. I cut these purposely at three inches so that you can get four rows of them, right? If I would have cut it longer, you would have been sh- like shortchanged on your, you would have ended up with a scrap on the end. These are cut at one and a half inch, again, so you can maximize how many rows you get out. The reason you can do that is because you have this awesome thick white frayed ribbon, which is currently out of stock. Um, It should be back in the week of January 24th, I saw. When you put that on here, and then you put your flirty or your blushing bride ribbon right over the top, you cover that up. So that's pretty amazing that you can be conservative with your paper if you're gonna be using ribbons that thick. Hi, Hildenal. So we got to see where our seam is. It's right there. I should say there's really not a seam. And I'm going to make a triple ribbon sandwich. So you can put your white ribbon down here first. And when I'm putting it down here, I'm actually looking at this row of hearts right here. And so I'm down here and I see the tops of my hearts. And I think that looks kind of weird. So I'm actually going to go up just a slight little bit. And then my hearts end and then the ribbon starts and there's no half hearts, <laughs> right? And we want whole hearts. All right, now I talked about a little more tear and tape over the top of your frayed ribbon. All right, and we're gonna prep that for the next ribbon. So this mist, this is um, petal pink ribbon. It comes with a pair of Misty Moonlight and the New Horizon Suite is where you can find that ribbon. So. Again, I'm just gonna tick, um, put my tails over to the tear and tape on the back. And yes, you could be done and not add more tear and tape, you guys. But I wanna have adhesive where my pink ribbon is so that does not come undone. And after all that is said and done, then you can definitely put a little adhesive on the rest of the back of the card. Oh man. If you want to, you could pop it up. I just did this, I realized this. I popped up my white piece. It's hard to see it, but you can kind of see that there's a little bit of height there. I popped this up, but can't do that now. Definitely gonna put this one flat and that's okay. Popping is definitely a personal preference. (laughs) And once you start popping, you can't stop. So the, there's a circle here. Um, the size of the circle is I'm guessing like two inches. It came from the layering circles. It's like two and an eighth and it's embossed with the gingham embossing folder. That's part of this suite of products. And what I'm going to do is put two dimensional. So this ribbon is pretty thick, right? It is about the height of the dimensionals. So what I'm going to do is put a dimensional on the top and on the bottom of this ribbon. And this, it's pretty sticky. And so when I put this on, 
to center it left to right, top to bottom. Those two dimensionals are enough to hold that. And because that ribbon is about the same height as the dimensionals, it's pretty smooth. This little envelope, this die, oh, I didn't show you guys. Sweet Conversations. Hi, Karen Wetstein. Sweet Conversations is the class that's coming up next week. And it features almost all the stamps and a lot of the dies. This little envelope comes from this set of products. <laughs> Jeannie Parker loves to pop. Woohoo! So um, you either got a purple or you got a pink envelope, okay? So purple or pink. This comes from the Marvelous paper. The Marvelous paper, it's called Simply Marvelous, is part of a celebration item. So you get it for free with a $50 purchase. And it's a little six by six pack. You guys, it's crazy. All the colors that coordinate with it. So you either got pink or purple. And you can get five envelopes cut out out of one six by six paper. And so we took half the sheets in pink and half in purple. And so both of them look super cool with this card. So I wasn't worried. Um, <laughs> the one side looks like your satin bed sheets. And the other side looks like marble <laughs> countertop. And what you're going to do is grab some mini glue dots and I like to put one underneath each of the three so the bottom the left and the right for your little flappers here and okay so you can fold in the left and the right and then the bottom goes up like that okay so a cute little envelope it's a baby it's, a, it's adorable <laughs> sorry you guys it's a little baby talk every now and then so Right. Originally, we were going to do just a regular purple or a pink heart. We decided against it, and we went with the, this is called Supple Shimmer uh, um, rain, uh, Glitter Paper. Um, in this little book here, I've got a page way in the back for those that have it, and there's a specialty papers here. So the Supple Shimmer comes in two colors. It's like a pool party and blushing bride. And so after we had the cards made, so Chris and I worked on this one together. After we had all the cards put together, I was like, oh my gosh, we have this really pretty pink shimmer paper. So we scrapped the purple heart and we went with a pink shimmer in the back. And so we thought that would be cool. So these little hearts have dimensionals on the back. So we're going to put one at the top of each of those or near the top. And the, the glittery one goes in first. And it doesn't go in all the way, but I tried to make it that you couldn't see the bottom. Oh man, okay. <laughs> so here's a little, um, and I just realized what happened. So you guys all got a heart <laughs> and I just did, um, let's see if I can show you. Oh, I can take that off. Okay, so you guys all got a heart in your kit, die cut like this. And I can't remember, I think I might've given everybody a small scrap. So the heart, this heart, has, so in the set, there's love you and that is one size like the heart is longer and skinnier and then there's hug me and bff the most universal one of all of them we thought was hug me and it's the rounder heart so everybody got a little white heart that is the rounder one now if you don't have the stamp set you know a white heart in here would look nice as well but you could also if you wanted take a sponge dauber and put pink ink all over it or purple ink. So you could definitely give it color that way. If you do have these stamps, the one is Hug Me, and I would take your Highland Heather ink. I, I don't know, I actually had mine stamped. So this is a universal heart. Like if you flip it one way or flip it the other way, it should work. And what you're gonna do is hover over the top until you get it right where you need it and stamp your heart. So it's a photopolymer stamp, so you can generally get it lined up if you are patient with it and hover, pick a point, and then pick another point, and then check the point in the beginning until you have them actually both lined up. That's the main goal. And so different ways that you could use this heart. Um, if you wanted to take a marker and draw a line around it and then just write your own little sentiment in here, you could do that as well. So just a little advice on the heart. And then I took a dimensional and then that little guy got stuck in on the side like that. And so you can kind of see both hearts peeking out of here. And actually, you know what you can do? I'm noticing it. This little heart could come up a little higher. 
so you see more of it. And then that one can come down a little bit lower so that you get more of that one showing it through. All right, then I put a little bit of liquid glue on the back of that envelope and it goes onto the front of your circle. So you can see here now, um, wasn't there a tiny envelope die? And there's Neil set, there sure was, Penny. There sure was. And I don't think I ever used it. I don't know, I missed using that one. All right, on the inside we have uh, Highland Heather. And hi, Ellen Brover. Have you rested up, Ellen? <laughs> Are you over any jet lag you may have had? <laughs> so I think Ellen... If I'm not mistaken, Ellen came from the furthest away. She flew from South Florida on Friday and attended the shoebox swap Friday night. So she was up early, probably five or six, I think it was. Flew all day, came here for dinner, and then um, did the shoebox swap. And she was back here by 8.45 on on Saturday morning and attended the event all day long and flew back home on Sunday, you guys. So that was dedication. Hi, Susan Reed. So on this one, you guys, I have here a heart down on the bottom, or I'm going to show you how to do a heart in the middle here. So if you ink up and you stamp off at second strength, and then you can put a heart here. There's a hair. Maybe there's not a hair. So you can put a heart there. And when you stamp it at second strength, it allows the sentiment to be seen. Where if you would have done it at first strength, it would have been way too dark. And I'm thinking part of my heart got missed. So there. Okay. That is Blushing Bride. If you really wanted to, you could also do another one and double whammy the hearts. So you have in the bottom and the top. A couple people did that in class last night. All right. So I think we're done with the Stamparoo here. Done with that, throw that away. A little adhesive, a little dabble do ya. Right on the back, and put that on your inside. Just like downtown. Embellishments. So, I don't know if you guys have heard me say this, but the iridescent rhinestones from the new mini catalog are my absolute favorite. And there are three different sizes. And in the kits, you got either a, like a bigger one and then two smaller ones. So I put my big one down there, can put a smaller one there, and then I have another one that can go right there. So these iridescent rhinestones are like cotton candy gems to me. So they pull out pink, they pull out purple, they pull out blue. They pull out any color that they're really kind of next to. Even yellow is in there. They just are, they're iridescent. So like little prism. They're very, very pretty. So I get excited when I see them. All right. So we're done with that. And what we'll do is bring in, hi, Donna Hale. We will bring in, <laughs> hi, Kenny. He's like, hey, I know her. I met her. <laughs> yes, it's me. You're the chip monster, Kenny. That's what you are. You ate all those sour cream and onion chips and didn't even offer me one of them. <laughs> so, you guys, now's the time. <laughs> I always ask you, what's your favorite card? So, I think you guys know I'm partial to the purple one. There's just something about that one that makes me happy. But he's pretty cute, too and or she whatever you want him or it to be or her <laughs> and then this one is just a classic more so you got three different styles of valentine's cards you got the one that is more appealing for kids you got the more um traditional style and then you got a more uh casual i don't know style so he said you never asked well kenny you don't have to be asked to give something to somebody. You could offer it without having to be asked for it. <laughs> so, plus you look like you were enjoying them way too much. And I didn't want to take away from your enjoyment with your sour cream and onion chips. But just know that I love sour cream and onion chips. So, chips. <laughs> Tyler would say chips. So, all right, you guys. I see them coming in. We got robot. We got red. Purple number one. Team purple. I really like the purple. Okay. They are also cute. I will have to case the robot for my grandson's Valentine's Day card. Perfect. You guys, all the layouts, I can say here, if you're looking for inspiration on an easy card layout, 
All of these were simple, like the layouts, layers though. You guys know I love my layers. I love ribbon. I love embellishments. And so that's what all of these have is it's a little bit of, of a little bit of everything. So, but not, not, it's not complicated, right? Just layers, um, different mats on them. So very, very cool. So we have, um, ink, paper, scissors will be next week, Wednesday. So my plan is to announce in class next Wednesday, um, the winners of these three cards who win them. So Sue is between the traditional and the purple. Perfect. You guys are loving. I love that you guys each have one that you like <laughs> so much because generally it's so funny because people generally say all of them, all of them. But on this in particular, I'm seeing individual ones. <laughs> so, cause they're all very different. Okay. So those are done for now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip the camera down and I'm going to share with you some cards I got. I got some Bert late birthday love in the mail. And I actually, I think I have maybe a Christmas card too. So I'm going to flip down. I meant to do this before we started, but I forgot like normal. So <laughs> we'll flip down. So I'm watching for the creativity and fellow stampers. Yay. Oh, that noon tip I did yesterday. That was a good one. All right, you guys. Uh, so these two came from Sandy Wicklander. Uh, she knows I love my V's. And Sandy, you must have sent this card one other time to me because I have one of these. Um, I have one of these, um, and the inside says happy birthday. I have one of these up in my little bookcase over there. So I will never, ever get rid of this B set <laughs> because it, it just, it, it goes with the hive. So I think I need to case this to make some B cards. Um, and this one's also from Sandy. I think you wrote a note in this one about that one though. I think, let me just look here really quick. Oh, it's a kickback. You don't remember the paper or the stamp, but, um, yes. This is old style Stampin' Up! paper from many moons ago and has a little border on the back here that she made. Super cool. I love it. Then this one came from Kay. Okay, oh, Warren. So, um, so this, Kay, you were so sweet. So our friend Brenda Wood passed away and Kay sent me a sympathy card. So I, I show Jeannie Parker. This is a card for Brenda that I got. Um, a beautiful card from Kay Warren, who's on the Be Happy Stamper team. So thank you so much for that, Kay. This one came from Christina Hazer. Uh, my Christmas card. <laughs> so I, I knew I had a Christmas card in here. So she used some of the gingerbread designer series paper, the old world embossing folder in the back. And so got a little Christmas card from Christina. This one came from Marty Gellings. And this was my birthday card. Today's plan, consume coffee, chocolate, cookies, and be awesome. So, and she's got, it's like, you got to open up to see, um, it's just a, like a gate fold, but what happens is you glue two strips on this side and you glue one strip on that side and then it opens so cool like that. So thank you for that, Marty. This one is from um, Naomi Worrell. So friends, stick together. <laughs> She's got a little glue and tape and a hot glue gun on here. And so she sent me a thank you. It says, thanks for sticking by my side. So happy thoughts from Michigan. So this was from my friend Naomi in Michigan. I have a belated birthday card from Randy Schultz. Woohoo, Randy. <laughs> she made me a B card too. This paper is from Celebration. Um, oh, I can remember. It must have been last. Gee, I was still doing classes in my house. It was two years ago. I remember the class. <laughs> so, um, and the bees are from the same bees that Kay, um, that Sandy had back here. So, and the little hive comes from there too. So it was awesome. Happy belated birthday. And it says, your birthday came, your birthday went. Here's the card I should have sent. <laughs> so awesome, Randy. I love it. This was a, a little hello from me to you. This was a card from um, Deb Norman. And I love how you use a little slip in there. Wishing you a little extra happiness just because you're you. And I love all the purples. And look at the little back and forth with the um, open weave ribbon with fresh freesia. So Flowering Rain Boots is the new stamp set and the little brush, brass, brush, butterflies. Blah, blah, blah. It's too many Bs. Brass, brush, butterflies. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, so we'll move on. Uh, this one came from Julie Frost. Um, so she sent me this little card with her money for the raffle from the tickets from the Winter Creative Escape. So Julie, it came. I don't remember. I think I texted you and I told you it came, but maybe I forgot. Okay, you guys, this one was Diane Rungy. 
she came to the winter creative escape with this fabulous pop-up card for me that's going to go on display in the hive look at that beauty woohoo pop up box card and it says another sensational year of you she used the bees you guys that honey bee set so very very cool um very cool so yes donna that one with the tulips is very pretty too i love it purples and yellows and all these different things oh my so she used that daisy punch and these are those we called these jemmies when Jean and I were stamping together, these big jemmies. You could not mail cards with these jemmies, though, because they would get stopped by the postman. He would not like these big bumpy things, <laughs> but I think they're beautiful. I have a pack of each of them. They came in clear and um, this gold color. Look at what she did with the bee here, you guys. It's got one of these wobbly things. So it bumps up. It's so awesome. So Diane, this is a beautiful card. I can now put it on display because we've officially showed it off. All right, this one came from Bonnie, oh, Kathy King. Kathy King, my beautiful per birthday, per per purple birthday card, <laughs> you guys. My mind is going already. It's the hive embossing folder, and then she used some of the galvanized paper that is uh, like a light lavender. It's like kind of Highland Heather-ish, and then the gorgeous grape ribbons and candles and some... So, Kathy King, you're going to have to tell Judy Immel where the sparkly paper came from because Judy Immel asked in class last night, if there's ever been, I don't think it's Stampin' Up, but Judy was looking for purple sparkly paper for something. And so, very cool. So, I love it. Hooray for me. So, thank you for that. And look at Kathy decorated her envelope. She always decorates her envelopes. I love it. This one, no, it was Bonnie Kelly, I think. Yes, Bonnie Kelly has a thank you card here for me. And... Um, and she loves my videos. <laughs> so I uh, thank you so much for this. I think there was money in here, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> so thank you for that. Uh, this one, look at this, you guys. This one came from Sue and Sue Somerville uh, sent this one. Polished pink, you guys. The open weave ribbon, the designer series paper, the pink dots. Happy birthday is from Blossoms in Bloom. I do recognize that one. And this is that flower punch set in the annual catalog. I can't recall the name of it, but it's a punch set that's out. I love the black with the, the polished pink. So very pretty, very, very pretty. All right, we got a couple more. You are amazing. And this comes from Kathy King as well, I'm pretty sure. Yes, I can see Kathy's name through here. So this was a paper pumpkin from May, I think, if I'm not mistaken. It's expressions in ink. Very pretty bow, Kathy. I love it. Um, extra bling on here. So very pretty. My purple, my pink. And last but not least, I have here, oh, Cindy Runtree. So this was the card. Hi, Julie Bierschbach. Uh, this is a card Cindy sent me. Uh, I love how it's like sky and then the grass and it's like you br um, brushed it, I think, with a blending brush or sponges or somehow you got like that shading really nice and the black is stamped right on there. So it says, hello. So I got that one from Cindy. So you guys, look at all this happy mail. I love it. All right. So on Sunday, we're going to do the Let's Just Stamp class. And hi, Teresa. Um, yes, you'll be able to catch the replay in a little bit. Um, Judy, you just painted it with glue and dipped it in glitter. Oh my gosh. Okay, that's awesome, Kathy. I'll have to tell her that. So I'll give these cards away when we have class on Sunday. So I have to do the drawing for those yet. And then we'll have these cards here for on Wednesday night when we're live. Okay. So got that all taken care of. So we're going to do a random number generator. And we're going to pick the door prize winners for class from Celebration, the launch party card class that I had on the 6th. Okay, you guys, I got done with the class and I thought, oh no, I forgot to do the door prize. So better late than never, right? Yeah, so much talent all the time, you guys. When you send cards, it's so much fun sharing them with everybody. So I had, I think it says 11 people. 11 people placed orders to get that class for free. So I'm going to flip my camera down and get to my random number generator and I'll flip it down in a second once I get it pulled up. And we'll see once who our lucky winner, winner, chicken dinner is. All right. Thinking, thinking, thinking. Ding, ding, ding. Here we go. So let me flip our still skin down. So I said 11 people. And let's see here. 11. And I'm going to hit the word go or generate. And it's going to tell me a number. 
Number six. Number six. Laura Sullivan. You are the winner from the celebration card class. It was the catalog launch party. So I will, um, I literally just mailed your package. It went in the mail today with your ink, paper, scissors, and sweet talk. So the next time you have a package going out, I will add a prize for you. So for the class tonight, you guys, I had eight people that placed orders to get the class for free. So we'll flip down here. And we're going to put eight for our max. And we're going to click generate. And number eight, Mo. Mo, you are the lucky winner. You were the last person to place an order to get this class for free. So you have some classes coming in February that will be mailed out to you. So I will include a little prize for you with that. Okay, so that's good. Now, let's grab a piece of paper. You guys... I'm going to pull up the email that Kelly sent me. So you guys had till this, I think she pulled the information this morning for the mystery card night. So I'm trying not to forget the board. So we'll do the board in a second. Um, let's see here. So got lots of emails. Let me pull up the right one. Oh, the emails, you guys. Um, where's Kelly, 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 Lamb. Perfect. Okay. So do you guys want to see my card? <laughs> I should say... Kelly's and my card. It was a team effort to make the card that we had in our head um, for the mystery card night. Thank you for everybody's patience. Oh my goodness. I inadvertently mixed up two of the measurements and I made a card the other way so that you guys could see how cool it is, even though it, well, I reversed it a little bit, reverse, reverse. But ultimately, I think that it was generally the same, just like different order. So I not only made that card with Kelly, I made three more cards with the same template because I love that little mini template of a card. Oh my gosh. So, all right, <laughs> let me grab them all. So I'm going to put them upside down so that we can. Okay. So this was the card that we did. So if you were watching the mystery card night, um, on Monday night, I kept using this piece of paper here. That was actually for this card. Um, so that was our designer paper. And we used the gorgeous grape on the bottom, white. We embossed it with the uh, stripes embossing folder. And then I took um, Blushing Bride ink and just hovered over to give it a little color. And then we have our background mat here is Highland Heather. And then the designer paper opens up and it's that heart paper on the one side. And it's the purpley stripes. We used that on the other card just tonight. The white piece and sponging the edges with Blushing Bride. And then here's that heart, you guys, that we just used tonight. Um, emboss it with the splatters embossing fo folder. So the stripes and the splatters come as a pair. This heart comes from the Sweet Conversations. It's the big one. Stamped in Highland Heather. And then you guys know it. Some iridescent rhinestones, that petal pink ribbon. So on the inside, then it says Happy Valentine's Day with that little heart in the middle. So this was the card that we had in our head for Mystery Card Night. So then I had swap cards that are due this week. And so, of course, you guys, I did the robot. So this is a... Um, oh, so Carissa and Anna and all the Be Happy Stampers who signed up for this um, team swap on Sunday, you're going to see these. These, these are the, my team swap. So... So I love this layout so much, I couldn't get enough of it. So I did a thick white, a real red, and then smoky slate. And then this is some of that sweet talk paper. And on the inside, it's the stripies with happy Valentine's Day and those little robot hearts. And I used, these are some of the faceted gems from the annual catalog that are pinks and reds and whites. And that red faux ribbon. And his little eyes are the little silver pearls. So this, sorry guys, you get to see my swap card early. So I made that one because I just, I love this layout so much. And then I have another swap. I actually, you guys, this is my celebration swap for on Sunday. So yes, I use the same layout because I loved it so much, but I changed it up slightly. In this case, I don't have a mat behind this paper, but I put some designer paper coming out the sides and it features celebration, the Hello Friendly, and then the stamp set. A double bow got put on the side here and black matte dots. And then the inside, it says, hope you have the best birthday. And so like this is a swap, so you could stamp whatever. And so 
you got the two tone. So it's like the same card, but slightly variated, like because of the difference. Okay. So that was a swap card. <laughs> Sorry for those in the swap. You're going to see it early. And then I have another swap with my upline and nobody from my team. So I, it's okay. I, you guys, I just went crazy with swap cards with the same like pattern. So then the swap that I have for my upline, it has to feature the Hello Lady bug. And so the Hive embossing folder had used the side strips here. Now I use the black card, like six by four as the black, emboss the top white piece here after I stamped, you can bug me anytime. And then here's the little ladybug on the leaf with some black matte dots. And then got that little guy on the inside. <laughs> I just, okay, so I truly got inspired from my own mystery card night <laughs> on Monday because I made basically four cards with the same layout. <laughs> so... I guess you'll have that. <laughs> Did anybody else? I know I just saw that Judy, I think it was Cheryl, does it open twice or just on the front? It just opens on the front. So it's like a mini card on the front. And um, you could definitely design it to open twice. You could. So Judy Bobo, you said you made another one too after um, the event. So that's awesome. So your question, um, Cheryl. So you could, I'm gonna flip down. If you wanted to, you could have had this be a whole card base and open it up and have a big white piece. Um, and that would be like a double card. You'd have a card on top of a card. That would be fine. You could do that. But, you know, um, for a swap, you don't necessarily have to do that. But if you want to be able to write more stuff, you could put a piece of white on the back here, a four and a four by four by five and a quarter mat and put that back here. So, um, but I just, it's so easy. It, it doesn't, it uses the same amount of paper as a normal card, even maybe a little bit less, but it's an A2 size card because it's the full you know, front of a card. You know, it's not just a card front, right? Because you actually have a card. So I don't know. I just was in love with it. So anyways, so drum roll, da -da 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 -da, you guys, <laughs> that was a bad drum roll. <laughs> um, so yeah, and go back and get the dimensions and make some, it's so cool. So this was a card I got, I got you guys, I did on... Um, December 30th, I think. I did two winter cards. They were for my winter bingo. So this was a, a card that opened up like this. Winner, winner, chicken dinner is Shirley Afton. You are the lucky winner. I don't know who you are personally, so I don't have your address either. Uh, so you're going to have to tell it to me so I can send this card to you. And this one, winner, winner, da -da -da, is Linda Hall. Another one, I don't know you personally. I don't have your address. So I need that to send this card to you. Okay, so perfect. I have that drawing done. Now, we need to flip back here. Um, Mo, I told you that you will get your name on two of these. So Mo, so Mo, you're gonna get three, um, six total spots. So when I fill out the next board, you're gonna get four more slips on there. And Kathy Groves, you'll get three of them. And I think I had a couple more, but I know, um, so Judy Bobo, I got your order on here. Laura Sullivan, I got yours on. Tammy Steckling, I got yours. Um, Jeannie Parker, when you were here on Sunday, you got two up for that as well. Um, Marsha Svatek, I got yours on, just so you know. Um, and Susan Reed, you placed an order recently. So just so you guys know, it, you get your name on the board, even if you're not here with me in person. Um, online orders count for the board. And I try to make sure I always, as soon as an order comes in, if I, as soon as I get to the board next, I try to make sure the name. But um, I knew this board was filling up so that I, I do have people on a waiting list now for the next board. So I'm going to go run and grab the little numbers and we're going to do a drum roll and we're going to find out who wins a $25 gift certificate. And Bellinger, you have one from the first board, if I'm not mistaken, it was you that won that one. So, um, and you have gift certificates burning a hole in your pocket. If I'm not mistaken, you have one. So, <laughs> all right. So, all right, let's flip down, you guys. Oh, we had to do the mystery card night, too. So all 25 numbers are in here. I'm trying not to forget anything, you guys. So we have 25 numbers, and so I'll pull out a number. We'll look at it, and then I'll flip the camera up and see whose it is. It's going to be the one inside this one. I want that one. <laughs> okay. 
Well, that can't be. How is there a 26 in here? Oh, you know what happened? I just thought of this. We did the last board of last celebration. We had to add one person to the board because I wasn't going to start a brand new board with one person. So we had to create. How random is that that I picked the 26? So we, if that makes sense to you, that's what popped in my head that we had to add one person. So 26 doesn't count. Isn't that random that that's the one I wanted? And so I'm going to actually put that in the garbage because that maybe will not happen again. <laughs> so let's do this again. Uh, yeah, that is, we didn't create a new board. We just put a 26 and that person got number 26. So, all right, now we're going to go with this one. Number 24. Okay. So, Dawn Reader, it's right there. I don't know, you guys can't see it from in there. I don't know unless you zoom in your camera, but Dawn Reader, you are number 24. So um, all it takes is one name and your or one $50 order and you get your name on the board. Uh, and every $50, it's an extra spot on the board. In addition to a celebration item, you guys, it is the best time of the year to shop and sign up and host a party. So, uh, so Dawn Reader, Thanks for congratulating her. Cindy, I appreciate that. I don't know. Dawn, you were watching earlier, so I don't know if you're here still watching, but I will definitely tell you that you won $25 gift certificate. Perfect. Okay, so let's flip. I'm going to pull up the names here. So Kelly had here names. So anybody who submitted a card for Mystery Card Night got their name on a list. This is the list. It looks like there's 44 people, so we'll pick two names for the drawing. And we'll go back to random number generator. And we will put in here 44. Click the word generate. Number 36 is Mary Jo McCulloch. So Mary Jo, I will pick a prize for you. I can't recall off the top of my head if I do have your address or not. That's you, if you're watching Mary Jo, if you could message me your address, that would be phenomenal. And then we will pick another person. And hopefully it doesn't pick 36 again. <laughs> oh my goodness. Number one. Who is number one? Susan Murphy. All right, Susan. You are a lucky winner of a prize as well. Again, a random prize from my, my vault. Isn't that crazy? So... I like to see that number one and then like on the other thing, number 24, like, so we're always naturally, I don't know, and I shouldn't say we all, but generally naturally drawn to the middle and not the parameters or like the outside. <laughs> so 24 was way on an outside and one was way on an outside. So it's nice to see those outer perimeters being utilized. <laughs> so um, Susan Murphy and Mary Jo McCulloch, if you're watching, I need to get your addresses, please. It will help me so I don't have to go search for them. If anybody knows who they are and you could let them know, that would be amazing too. Because um, I can't mail prizes if I don't have addresses. And honestly, if, if people have won prizes way in the past and they haven't done anything with me with cards or... Um, orders. I don't generally have addresses. So I don't want to have to go searching for hours on and looking for it. So it'd be great if Mary Jo and Susan, if you could message me your addresses. Um, and also the card winners, you guys, one more time, we have Shirley Aston and Linda Hall. If you guys could share your addresses with me, I would really appreciate it. So, okay. <laughs> Did we make it through everything? That is always the million dollar question. I always think that when I hang up, <laughs> Not hang up, but end the, the recording. Then it's like, oh, I forgot to do that. Oh, I forgot to do that. So, well, if we did forget anything, I'll be live Sunday at 2 p.m. Central, you guys. We're going to make the Let's Just Stamp cards. And again, if anybody missed out on getting card kits tonight that would like some, I have some. I have some for Sunday as well. And if you reach out to me and you want multiple card kits at this point, we can do a little savings on the shipping and consolidate so that you don't have to pay shipping each time. I like to save you guys some extra money on shipping when I can consolidate card classes together. Um, so Kathy King, that is a really good question. How do I do it? <laughs> but I do have some exciting news for you guys. I asked for a leave of absence from my current employer, who is amazing. I, I have, I work for a really good company and I, um, they have granted me access 
to take a one month leave of absence to kind of like try before I buy. Please remember to send me the card I won. Carmen, <laughs> you, I, uh, you're gonna have to, I'm pretty sure that I sent it, but you're gonna have to remind me, ugh. So that, you know, I send out a lot of cards. <laughs> so that is a very vague statement. I can't remember at this moment um, what card you won, but I know I sent about seven of them in the mail on Monday. Um, and I can't recall right now. I honestly, Kathy King just asked, how do I work a full-time job? <laughs> I can't remember everything all the time. And so if you guys help me remember things, like when you ask me things, then I can answer a lot better. But um, so I put in for a one month leave of absence uh, and I am, well, I've been granted that from my employer. So I'm going to officially be doing Stampin' Up! full time from February 7th to March 6th. And um, yes, screaming with excitement. So I can't say then that I'm doing two jobs. Um, so I'll be doing Stampin' Up! because I'm going to try it before I, I shouldn't say buy it, but try it before I do it and make the leap and see how it goes. And hopefully that will go into something more permanent with me doing Stampin' Up! full time for as long as I can make it work. <laughs> so, so yeah. So Jeannie Parker, I have Brenda Wood to thank for that. I'm going to show you guys a card that Brenda sent me. Hang on one second. Hilda Nell, I saw that you wanted ink, paper, scissors. So I um, got that. So you guys, my friend Brenda Wood sent me this card. Um, I think, I don't think she dated it. She said to not read it out loud. There's a little note in there. Um, but so Brenda Wood sent me this card back in November. It stands up here in the hive and it says, go confidently in the direction of your dreams. Live the life you have imagined. And she colored the girl purple. She's got brown hair. No, she's not purple, but her shirt is purple. And she colored. So Brenda made me this card and it says, thank you for all you do. You're absolutely amazing. And I won't read the inside because she didn't want me to read the inside. But I got this card on a day that I had been contemplating of what I was going to do with my full-time job and everything that I do with Stampin' Up. And Stampin' Up is my love and my passion, you guys. And when I got this card, it was like, yes, just take that leap of faith and do it. And that was back in November. And um, so <laughs> it's December, two months later, and then I'm going to be doing this leave of absence. And then hopefully from there, I can make that, that decision to just cut the umbilical cord and do Stampin' Up full-time. So I have this by my side here in the hive and I look at it often and now Brenda is no longer with us um, in person, but Brenda is always in my heart and she's always with me. It's amazing. She's, she's telling me, just do it. Go for it. You got it, girl. <laughs> so yes, I have a great employer and they left the door open for me that if in a year or two years, as long as they're not bankrupt, they would take me back in a heartbeat. So I'm very blessed to be able to have such a great employer and also to have Stampin' Up! in my life. So, wow. Yes, Jeannie Parker. Brenda has played a big role in my decision to to make this leap of faith and just make it happen is what, cut the crap and make it happen is what my old boss used to say to me. So, all right. So you guys, so I've got a few more weeks of doing the double duty and then come and in there, I have a vacation down in Florida. <laughs> and so I come back from Florida. I have a couple days, I have three days and then I'm off for a month and I'm going to hit the floor running. So, woohoo. So, oh, Thank you, Don Reader. So, Don, you are watching. Yay. So, you got a $25 gift certificate from the celebration board. Woohoo. Yes, go for those dreams. You know what? And with Brenda's passing, it makes you realize that she was only, uh, Jeannie, you might correct me if I'm wrong, but I thought she was 63, but now I'm thinking she might have been 61. I think she quit her job at 61 and now she's 63. Uh, you know, so. It, way too young. And it's like, you don't know if your last day is tomorrow. You don't know if it's next week. You don't know if it's a year from now. You honestly never know. And like, honestly, one of the reason that I got together with my family for Christmas is because one of my brothers said, well, you don't know if this is our last Christmas with mom and dad. And so you know what? We got together for Christmas, come hell or high water. We were all together because you never know. And um, life is too short. And I have, you know, you got to like go through this thought of like, just stop living in fear and stop doing, stop not doing things because you're afraid and just start living life and doing the things that you want to. And this is something I've wanted for a very long time. And it's time to, you know, take a little baby step one at a time and see if this is right. So you're right. And life is too short. Follow your dreams. And 
That's how it is with everything. When it comes to spending time with family and friends, life is too short. You never know when you're not going to see somebody again. So every opportunity you can have to spend with loved ones and your friends and your family, you got to do it. Who cares if you're sick, right? Like That's how I look at it at this point. Sorry, don't like to talk about that stuff so much, but bring it on. I would rather see you than not see you because you never know when you're not going to be able to see that person. So I've kind of taken that attitude, attitude towards it. So what is the name of the pop-up flower card? What is the name of the pop-up flower card? That one that I'm going to flip down really quick. Dawn, is this what you're talking about? This pop-up flower card? Um, so Diane Rongi, if you're watching, um, I don't know if there's a technical name for it, but I always just called it a pop-up box. So um, she was only retired a year, Jeannie. Yes. Yeah. It was crazy. She, yeah. And that sucks too. You hear that more times than not, you retire and then something happens and you only got a half a year or a year of retirement. No, life is too short. You got to spend time. Yeah. I think it's called a pop-up box card, uh, John. So you guys, you got to, you got to do the things that you love to do at this point in your life. We've learned that over the last two years of being confined and being told that we can't Start doing what you want to do. Start living, you guys. <laughs> I, I heard a quote in the last two weeks. Stop being afraid of dying and start living the life that you should be living. And, and that's my mentality that I've had over the last month or two now. So it's very true, you guys. Everybody's got to don't be afraid anymore. So card in a box is what Ian says. So, okay, you guys. I have, uh, I'm so excited. Tyler said he's going to come over after work tonight. He's just finishing up and we are having um, a friends, we're calling it Friends Fest um, in the middle of November. We had only seen most of our friends one, like one gathering with everybody in the last year and a half. And we decided that everybody missed seeing each other. So once every couple months now, we're, we've planned, we're planning Friends Fest. And so I said, Tyler, nobody's going to come over if we don't invite them. <laughs> so, so he's coming over and we're making invitations. He's going to get out the machine and he's going to start die cutting and embossing. And we're making handmade invitations for our Friends Fest is what we're calling it. So instead of Friendsgiving or Friends Miss, we're doing Friends Fest. And so that's exciting. So Tyler's going to come over and we're going to do a little creating of some invitations for a, a gathering we're having in a couple weeks. So, all right, you guys. So on that note, lots of sunshine, love, and hugs to you always. And make it a great weekend. I'll see you on Sunday at 2 p.m. Central for the Sailing Home Card class. Um, in the middle, if you guys need anything, don't hesitate to reach out to me. Um, if you need help putting an order in, if you need help with a question, with something, you know, just send me a message and I'll see if I can be available to help you. Um, and also, don't forget about the Summer Creative Escape. If anybody was on the fence and thinking that they might attend in person that didn't attend um, this last one that I don't know about, reach out to me so I can make sure I can pencil you in for the day that you're thinking. Um, oh, please show the invitation when it's finished. Oh, Deb, you're so, yes. He, he wants to, I don't know what he has up in his mind. I know he wants a beer mug on it, though. <laughs> Yes, he is involved in my crafting passion. Yes, he is. He is very, very supportive. So it's amazing. He gives me ideas that he probably shouldn't give me because then it gets him into work. <laughs> More work. Oh, you guys, I forgot all about that, Barbara Godby. Yes, there is a swap card showcase tomorrow night at 530 Central. There is. Uh-huh. So I have a counter full of swap cards from the Winter Creative Escape and from my Dazzling Demonstrator group that I'm a part of. And I have, it's gonna take probably a good hour and a half to two hours. So go to the bathroom beforehand, get a drink, get some popcorn, get whatever you need to do, a paper and a pen, and we're going to be going through some swap cards tomorrow night. You are right, thank you for that reminder. I would have remembered it at some point in the near future. So yes, swap cards tomorrow night, 5.30 Central. See you guys Friday, Sunday, and then Wednesday, Tuesday, Tip Tuesday. So lots of stuff, you guys. I'll see you later. Lots of love to you guys. Bye.